Hello and welcome back. I had the opportunity to try out the brand new Intel Core i9 4900K S processor about a week or so prior to the product launch. And since EK has just released their cryo cooler installer supporting the 14th generation processors, I figured I'd do exactly the same as I did with the 13900KS, that is maximizing the P core frequency. So in today's video, I wanna show you how I got to 6.9 gigahertz and hopefully give you an idea of what's possible with the best Raptor Lake has to give. Here's the hardware that I'll be using for my overclocking session. This is the first time I'm using the Bench Lab in one of my videos. Full disclosure, I'm part of the Bench Lab team, so I might be a bit biased. For this system, I thought it would be cool to set up with the open bench table in vertical mode to see how it works. The Bench Lab provides a bunch of power, voltage, temperature, and other telemetry data of the system to your test bench. I also used the Bench Lab to map the radiator fan curve to the water temperature. I didn't really have that much time with the system, so I had to focus on specific objectives. I knew I didn't have enough time to work out a fully stable system, so I focused on the following objectives instead. Only enable the P cores, achieve the highest possible CPU frequency in unregulated mode, set up the system so that it's stable enough to pass certain benchmarks in both cryo and unregulated mode, and set it all up in the BIOS so no adjustments in the operating system are required. Before I show you some of the benchmark results, let me walk you through the BIOS configuration. Now, note that this is really for entertainment purposes only. As I said before, I don't consider this a fully stable system. So don't go ahead and copy these settings and apply them to your 14900KS. Since we're focusing on P-Core performance in this video, let's first disable the E-Cores. So you go to the advanced menu and enter the CPU configuration submenu. Set active efficient cores to zero. Now let's set up our P-Core overclock in the extreme tweaker menu. Set performance core ratio to by core usage. That enables us to configure a dynamic P-Core overclock as we can configure the maximum allowed P-Core ratio for a given number of active P-Cores. Set one core and two core ratio limit to 69. Set three core ratio limit to 65. Set four core and five core ratio limit to 64 and set six core, seven core, and eight core ratio limit to 62. This configuration will boost the CPU to 6.9 gigahertz when up to two P cores are active, and up to 6.2 gigahertz when all eight P cores are active. Enter the specific performance core submenu. Here we can limit the maximum ratio for each P core individually and define a core specific adaptive voltage. The ratio limit is enforced even if the by core usage turbo ratio configuration would allow for a higher P core frequency. Set performance core 0, 1, 2, and 5 specific ratio limit to 67. Set performance core 3, 6, and 7 specific ratio limit to 69. And set performance core 4 specific ratio limit to 66. Leave the specific performance core submenu. Enter the AVX related controls submenu. Now we can adjust the AVX negative ratio offset, which lowers the P-Core ratio when using AVX. The offset is referenced against the per P-Core ratio limit, which we just configured. Set AVX2 ratio offset to per core ratio limit to user specify, and set AVX2 ratio offset to six, then leave the AVX related controls submenu. The next step is to configure the P-Core voltage. Since I had limited time with this setup, I wasn't able to dig into the VF point configuration and fine tuning. Hence, to the hardcore overclocking enthusiasts, my voltage configuration may look a bit basic. In the extreme tweaker menu, set global core ISVID voltage to adaptive mode. This allows us to control the voltage associated with the highest point of the voltage frequency curve. The configured adaptive voltage maps to what's called the OC ratio. The OC ratio is equal to the highest configured CPU ratio. In our case, that's 69X. To better understand how this voltage affects the rest of the VF curve, let's go into the VF point offset submenu. In this menu, we can configure Intel's advanced voltage offset feature, more commonly known as the VF points. This feature extends the adaptive voltage mode, 
by allowing end users to undervolt or overvolt specific points of the CPU's factory fused voltage frequency curve. It also informs us about the target voltage for a variety of other frequency points. In the case of the 14900KS, VF points 9 and 10 are mapped to 62x. The voltages for the CPU ratios between 69x and the next VF point, 62x, are interpolated by the CPU. Leave the VF point offset submenu. Set additional turbo mode CPU core voltage to 1.525. Now let's move on to the more advanced part of the BIOS configuration. Let's go back to the frequency configuration. I rely heavily on the OCTVB configuration to dynamically adjust the CPU frequency. So in the extreme tweaker menu, enter the thermal velocity boost submenu. Set TVB voltage optimizations to disabled. That prevents the CPU from automatically reducing the voltage based on its current operating temperature. This feature is useful when relying on default voltages and ratios. However, it may cause instability when manually tuning the voltage frequency curve. Set overclocking TVB to enabled. The easiest way to think of OC TVB is to limit or clip the maximum allowed CPU ratio based on the operating temperature. The hotter the CPU, the more you clip the CPU ratio. OC TVB is based on the bi-core usage turbo ratio configuration. For each number of active cores, you can define two temperature points, each with a unique number of down bins. The configuration may look a little bit complex, but it's actually quite straightforward. Let's look at a specific example. When one P-core is active and the temperature is below 10 degrees Celsius, then the P-core ratio will be set to 69x. When the temperature exceeds 10 degrees Celsius, the P-core ratio will be 5 bins lower. So 69x minus 5x is 64x. Then when the temperature exceeds 50 degrees Celsius, the ratio down bends once more to 63x. Leave the thermal velocity boost submenu. We also need to make a couple adjustments to the voltage configuration. First, enter the Digi plus VRM submenu. Here we can make changes to the voltage regulator configuration. We adjust the VRM load line to minimize the V-droop. That is the voltage reduction when the CPU goes from idle to full load. We choose a VRM load line with a small V droop, so the effective voltage deviates the least from our manually configured CPU voltage frequency curve. Set CPU load line calibration to level 7. Leave the Digi Plus VRM submenu. Then enter the internal CPU power management submenu. Set regulate frequency by above threshold to disabled. This feature is part of the ASUS AI overclocking toolset. It allows you to configure a maximum temperature for the CPU. Once the temperature exceeds the target temperature, the motherboard reduces the CPU frequency by adjusting the turbo boost power limit parameters. Set IAAC load line to 0.05. By defining the AC load line, we adapt the CPU voltage management to the motherboard electrical impedance. The AC load line adjusts the voltage request from the CPU to the voltage regulator. And by setting the AC load line very low, we tell the CPU not to deviate too much from the programmed voltage frequency curve when issuing the VID request to the voltage controller. Leave the internal CPU power management submenu. The final piece that's missing from this overclock is of course high speed memory. Now, Normally, I would simply rely on enabling the XMP profile and then fiddling with the frequency to get the highest performance while retaining stability. However, for this video guide, I will rely on the ASUS DimFlex technology. DimFlex is an ASUS overclocking technology that enables dynamic memory performance based on the memory operating temperature. It is in part based on an Intel technology called Dynamic Memory Boost, which enables at runtime switching between JDAC and XMP profiles. ASUS goes one step further with DimFlex as they added a proprietary circuitry on the board to measure the memory temperature. Then, similar to CoreFlex, you can define three memory performance levels, which will activate based on the operating temperature. The depth of the tuning is impressive, as you've got access to lots of memory timings. In this case, I opt for one of the three available ASUS profiles. In the Extreme Tweaker menu, set DimFlex to Enabled. 
This will immediately load this kit's DDR5 8000 XMP profile with ASUS tweaked timings. But we'll go one step further with the tuning. Enter the DimFlex Dynamic DRAM Temperature OC Switcher submenu. Here we can configure the DimFlex configuration. But as I said, I'll just use one of the profiles this time. Enter the DimFlex Presets submenu. Select Load Hynix 8533-8266-8000 2 by 16 gigabyte single rank profile. This sets the base memory frequency of DDR5 8533, then shifts to DDR5 8200 when the temperature exceeds 45 degrees Celsius, and then shifts one more down to DDR5 8000 when the temperature is above 55 degrees Celsius. Then save the settings, exit the BIOS, and boot into the operating system. Here we set the cryo cooling technology to unregulated mode. That will make the EK Delta 2 tech operate at the maximum power. After letting the system idle for a bit, we can see three of the eight P cores boost to 6.9 GHz when the CPU temperature is below 10 degrees Celsius. Now that we've fully configured the BIOS, let's have a look at the benchmark results of 3 Mark CPU profile, ADA64, and the Tomb Raider game benchmark. The Tomb Raider game benchmark is probably the most interesting as it shows all 8 P cores running at 6.2 GHz with a relatively low temperature and high speed memory. All right, let's wrap this up. The Intel Core i9-14900KS processor is not only the final form of the Raptor Lake microarchitecture, but it's also the final iteration of what we can consider the traditional Intel monolithic chip design. With Arrow Lake coming at the end of 2024, it'll be tiles and interposers. But it's interesting to see what the best of the best of the Raptor Lake silicon has got to give. And in that regard, the 14900KS doesn't disappoint. It comes with a 200 megahertz higher peak frequency compared to the previous uh, top chips of Raptor Lake. So that would be the 13900KS and the 14900K, which can boost to six gigahertz. And by leveraging the Intel cryo cooling technology, we can get the 14900KS all the way up to 6.9 gigahertz on the P cores. Admittedly, that's with a tech cooler and it's just idling at the desktop. But 6.9 gigahertz is nevertheless a really good result. And also with that same cooling setup, we can actually game at 6.2 to 6.3 gigahertz when we just have the P cores enabled. That's also pretty spectacular. I also tried to get to seven gigahertz. And while I could see that once in a while, I didn't manage to get it fully stable, but someone can dream, right? We can dream that maybe one person out there will be able to use the tech cooler and get to seven gigahertz. Anyway, that's all for today. And that's also all for Raptor Lake. So let's see what Arrow Lake can bring in terms of overclocking experience towards the end of the year. If you have any questions or comments about this video, feel free to drop them in the comment section below. I wanna thank you for watching, and of course, I wanna thank the Patreon supporter support, and see you next time.